Super let your girl Adela. We're starting off today talking about my very own father, that is the Jagaban of Lagos. I swear you better to know somebody. <laughs> The man is back in the news and we will tell you exactly why. We think we know why he's back in the news, but we're going to help you out. So last month was his birthday, as you guys would remember, because Colin Owo kept interrupting this show during his birthday with the newspaper accolades that were printed for the man. It's okay, you don't need to. So stop wasting my time. Anyway, once again, the man turned 69 years old. <laughs> he does 69 every year. But the latest development is that Nigerians are now talking you know, a baby in Nigeria, they like to talk. They are saying that the man is seriously getting ready for 2023 presidential election. If you follow me on Instagram, then you probably already know what we are going to talk about. And if you're not following me on Instagram, first of all, like seriously, what's your problem? Why are you not following your girl? <laughs> Just kidding, no, it's not by fire by force. But if you follow me, you can hear the news before the news comes out. Anyway, you can also look on Twitter and on Facebook and you will see why people are talking about my father. So it started on the eve of his birthday. <laughs> the man decided to visit Kano, Kano State, which coincidentally happens to be one of the two states with the most number of voters in Nigeria. Anyway, so during his visit to Kano, Aswaju Tinubu said that the governor of Kano is a transformative and reformative leader. Mm. The same governor, Ganduje. The man that collects, allegedly, collects bribe and dollar. As what you, you don't mean it. Continue. So, he visited the Emir of Kano as well. He kept saying that Kano and Lagos are very important to the success of Nigeria. He didn't say the success of election, but the success of Nigeria as a whole. And that the two states need to interact more. Amen, somebody. Kano and Lagos must be seen talking to Nigerians, celebrating, mapping, debating, and promoting peace and harmony. <laughs> and then he went about commissioning projects in Kano State the day before his birthday. How nice of him, very, very generous. So the drama continues when last week we suddenly started seeing bags of rice with Tinubu's picture, Bagada, <laughs> on the bags of rice being distributed in Kano. I said, uh-uh. Since when did the people of Kano become my father's favorite? Eh? I don't understand. Anyway, the people giving out the rice said that it was for Ramadan. But that is just in case anyone is thinking that the man is stylishly campaigning and preparing for 2023, <laughs> they quickly said that this is just for Ramadan, no strings attached. Wow. So, of course, this has sparked a lot of questions among Nigerians. First of all, uh, my father, Balachinobu himself, denied that he was the one behind the distribution of rice and canoe. He said, we've seen the images being circulated of bags of rice depicting Asuwaju's face being distributed across parts of the north. I am not responsible for this initiative, but I commend the efforts of the various volunteer groups responsible for this benign act of charity and love for one another, particularly in this holy month of Ramadan, Akwodun Odun Ramadan. Wow, 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 wow. So you know why I find this funny? <laughs> he denied being behind it, which may be true because the first thing I noticed is that they wrote Jagaba instead of Jagaban. The N it was missing. Koyodowo thought a Kano person must have spelled that. <laughs> but in the same sentence, the man commended whoever is behind the distribution. <laughs> It's just like he's complimenting himself while also denying that it's him, not me. Call the wrote that. Second of all, why did he state that this was especially good to see during the holy month of Ramadan? Mm -mm. I mean, he's a former governor of Lagos State. Ramadan isn't just happening in Kano State. It's also happening in Lagos State and every other part of Nigeria. You know? <laughs> so has he distributed rice in Lagos for Ramadan? Is what I'm trying to know. My Lagos people let me know. Or why is it that only Kano is the one receiving rice? Because we have Muslims all across Nigeria. Once again, it seems to me that uh, my father Tinubu may be thinking a little more about something else than Ramadan. But what do I know? Another interesting thing that happened recently is we started seeing posters of our father already up in Lagos where they say that he's running for the 2023 presidential election. Hey Amen, somebody. Show them, show them, show them. Okay, okay, okay. And we're like, wait, why is this a coincidence? I don't know. One of the posters said that he's the man with experience. The rest of you don't have experience, so... <laughs> 
Kampala. But the man has been governor twice from 1999 to 2007. He's been the godfather of Lagos since 2007. Deciding who becomes governor and who serves only one term. No, we mean to come. I'm just saying. Trusted and experienced. That is what they mean. Another one of the posters said that this is non negotiable. I said, Jesus, Jesus. Now, the good thing is, his posters also surfaced in 2018. You remember that time before the 2019 election? And at that time, he denied it. He said he had no intention of running against Buhari or, you know, to win the presidency. So, but the only thing is, at this time, this is 2021, we've been waiting and we are still waiting for him to deny these new posters that we are seeing because the new posters say 2023. Anyway, while all that is happening, that was how my uncle, Uncle Wasiwa Ide, released a song that uh, something along the line of Bau Saba Setan Yoruba Lokan Asuwa Jubala Tinumu Bau Saba Tishato Bejo Yoruba Lokan Marabagbi Rowi Ike Esha Rowi Ike Eku as in, once the northerners are done, the Yorubas have to take over power and it has to be as well. You will have to be a did I ask you to play it? Don't let YouTube flag my show. I was like, what? Did he just? Okay. So, but as experienced as the man is, some Nigerians are talking. They are raising eyebrows. They are raising concerns. Number one, they are still talking about the bullion vans. You guys will not forget that during the last election, the pictures of bullion vans going inside as compound surfaced. You know what I'm trying to say. And at that time, he said it's not a big deal. EFCC also looked away at that time. Tinubu simply said that it's nobody's business what he does with with his money. You know, billion van taking money to his house. Also, the other concern people are raising is the fact that Tinubu owns Lekki Toll Gate. Yes, we've talked about it a lot, especially since October of last year. This is the same toll gate where several young people lost their lives on October 20th because they were protesting and the military opened fire. The tragedy was completely denied by the government officials for months. Tinubu did not say anything. Uh, and you know, the sad thing is the US saying that it's true nobody was killed that's such a huge di disappointment that America would say that nobody was killed at Lekki Gate despite all the evidence. And then of course Tinubu did not say anything about the shooting for four days and then on the fourth day he had a press conference. Uh, to those who are hospitalized in the first place and equally to ask him pointedly did he order <laughs> the attack Anyway, he publicly denied being involved, although during his interview he said some things that I'm not really sure how to describe. Those who uh, suffer casualty during the gunshot need to answer some questions too. How are they there? How long were they there? What kind of characters are they? Wow. Wow. Anyway, the cocoa of the matter is the man owns the toll gate, which is why people are asking who ordered the shooting of the young people. So as it is, all of these are the reasons why people believe that he may be getting ready to become president in 2023 and they have their concerns, which I just told you. Now, while this is going on, something exciting is also going on. That is the hashtag that is now trending on Twitter, which is hashtag under 40 and fit to lead. This hashtag has brought some awareness to the fact that we Nigerians have been constantly at the mercy of old men who have amassed a lot of wealth, a lot of times illegally, through corruption, you know, and these old men continue to recycle themselves as leaders of Nigeria and it is time for that to stop. So this hashtag is also to bring to our awareness that young Nigerians have so much potential and they can lead. So you may be wondering why we decided to talk about this story. First of all, Asuwaju has the right to run for president too. As a Nigerian citizen, I'm not campaigning for him. I'm just saying, don't be surprised if he wins the election. Because many of you are just commenting online what you're supposed to do, Google. You are not doing it. He has the money, he has the connection. If you are just there commenting online, you don't do what you're supposed to do. You will just see the man who will just and he will just enter like that. You can do a but if young people are serious about running for office and taking charge of their country, my people, this is the time to get involved. This is the time to join politics. This is the time to join political parties. This is the time for you to register yourself as a candidate. Next year will be 2022. By then, election rates will be heating up. It will be building up. Don't just tweet online. Where are the young people who believe that they have what it takes? Instead of just yabbing Tinubu online, saying that he will not win. Eh, hey, 
my dear brothers and sisters, go and register as a candidate. I'm talking about this story, mainly to say to young Nigerians, if you are 20 something, if you are 30 something, if you are 40 something, even if you are 50 something, don't say, aha, 50 something, according to Bola Tinubu, is still young. <laughs> Did you not hear him saying that the governor of Lagos is a youth? The governor in particular is a youth. So you see, that's very funny. Coming from a man who calls himself 69. Anyway, all I'm saying is if you are 20 something, 30 something, 40 something, whatever, and you're just commenting online, that won't do you anything if you're not actively involved. I'm really hoping that this hashtag will motivate people to get more involved in the political process in Nigeria. I know some states and some parts of the country pose larger problems to these than others, but nothing will change if we don't try and make that change happen. Anyway, you guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Chad, ladies and gentlemen, you must have heard the shocking news mm -hmm. that Mr. President, 68-year-old Idris Deby, was killed in battle with rebels on the outskirts of the capital of Chad. The president was wounded several times and reportedly died on the battlefield. Wow. Now, if you ask me, the man did not need to die. He didn't need to die if he had just stepped down. JJ, how is five times not enough? Five times in office, 30 years. How is that not enough? Deby has been the president of Chad for the last 30 years. He was elected in 1991 and has won every single election for the last three decades. I don't know whether he won legally or not. I'm just saying, you know, don't get me wrong. A lot of people in charge loved him, especially for his taking charge attitude and his strong military career. Remember when he led the soldiers to fight Boko Haram when they went to Chad. And also remember how he won several battles during his time as an advisor to President Hisseini Habri, who was the notorious warlord prior to his election. But you know, some people also describe him as a dictator and a controversial president. I mean, when you start seeing bodies of opposition members, that's an evidence, including widespread genocidal attempts against the Zagwa people when they formed their own parties and demanded for reform. He often jailed people who were speaking out against him. Bodies of opposition members were found. And also, like I said, he was in power for 30 years. So when he died, guess what? His son, who is a general major in the army, took over. I'm like, is this a family affair? Like, wow. Chad. Seriously, you want to go there? The father did it for 30 years and now the son is taking over. They said that as an interim leader for the next 18 months. Ah, uh -uh, one and a half years. So the son dissolved the parliament. He basically dissolved the government. <laughs> he said that so that he can maintain stability in Chad until the next election. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, if you're wondering why the vice president did not take over, well, that is something very interesting. Since 1991, that the man became president, the Republic of Chad has not had a vice president. So they've not had a vice president since 1991. He didn't allow a vice president. For 30 years, that is why his son took over. Anyway, last year in November, the president said he was committed to a reform law that would see the role of vice president return to government. So last year in November, he wanted a vice president. But a lot of lawmakers, as well as a lot of the citizens, opposed this idea because he was getting ready for the election and they saw it as too much potential for him to use the vice president to extend his rule and ideals. So they thought he was just trying to use that to extend his rule. I mean, of course, he wanted to stay in power. So fast forward to when he died. He had just won another election this same month. He won his sixth, sixth term. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he was getting ready for another inauguration when he went to visit the soldiers fighting rebels and then he got killed. You see why I said that the man didn't need to die? That He wouldn't have died if after five terms he just decided to step down JJ, and just retire. You know, be a grandfather. 68, almost 70. You get what I'm saying? Even if you're doing a regular job, there is what we call retirement age. How is five terms? How is that not enough? He had just ended his presidency after that five times. He wouldn't have been killed. So like we said, his son is now the new president of Chad. His name is Mahamat Ibn Idris Debi Itno. Now, if history is of any indication, his son was the military advisor for Chad. So hopefully this isn't a sign of yet another three decades of violence and tragedy. We're really hoping that the son would for real, for real, let go of power after the 18 months. But I don't know why he has to take 18 months. I mean, they just had an election. Why can't they just let the person that came in second become the president. But let me know what you think about this story. Anyway, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Ethiopia, ladies and gentlemen, things are not going well 
at all. I feel really bad that we've not talked about Ethiopia for so long. We've taken so long to come up with updates on Ethiopia. And it's because we tried to record an episode a few different times, but information kept coming out and news kept being updated. So we decided to just wait a little bit to get more information, to get more facts about what's happening in Ethiopia before we make our follow-up video on it. As a matter of fact, things have gotten really, really bad. Things have gotten worse since the last time that we spoke about Ethiopia. So many people have died and despite Ethiopia and Eritrean troops seemingly withdrawing, according to reports, this hasn't stopped the violence. According to a report from CNN, it actually escalated the violence in so many ways. And the worst part is rape is now being used as a weapon of war as Ethiopian troops begin an ethnic cleansing of their own. Wow. Once again, rape is being used. Now, this is just heartbreaking. <laughs> Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed seriously needs to get the military under control and start handing out punishment because this is not right. So while the Prime Minister has made a statement confirming the presence of Eritrean troops despite denying it for months, so but the Prime Minister really needs to talk more about the war crimes being perpetrated by the forces. I'm glad that Ethiopia declared a state of emergency for the Amhara region of the country. So I guess that something is being done but it's not enough. But you know it's not just about reports that we're seeing. There are so many video evidence of the atrocities happening at the hands of both the Eritrean and Tigrayans, there's evidence of mass grave that have been discovered. Mass execution videos are becoming public. They are making it public and the discrimination appears to be rampant. I'm sorry, but YouTube will not let us show you guys those videos. But so many Ethiopians are accusing the Eritreans of an ethnic cleansing. They're saying that the Amharas in particular are being targeted by the rapists, by the murderers. And as at the time they were shooting this video, civilian casualties are still Still being estimated but reports of 39 mass killings and executions have been documented 39 and current civilian debt is now above 52,000 see just one mass killing alone is more than enough but to talk about 39 mass killing 39 different mass killings what the heck is going on I'm just so sad about this news and I was really hoping that over the months that Ethiopia would improve and the conflict would be peacefully resolved but as you guys can see this is exactly what we've been talking about from the beginning of this conflict is that once you start a war you never know how many people will become casualties right now we don't know how many children have been displaced we don't know how many women have been raped and unfortunately things did not stop there recently we've seen that the violence is spreading this week 18 people were killed in another ethnic clash between the Oromos and the Amhara people so you can only imagine the number of families that are presently going through tough time right now in Ethiopia of course our heart goes out to all the families who have been affected affected by this. I don't see how anybody who has not been affected by this in Ethiopia. And we're hoping that the conflict will be resolved soon because far too many people have died. People that don't need to die. We'll keep you guys posted on what's happening. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before we leave today, I want to give a quick shout out, first of all, to our favorite quack doctor on this show. That is Dr. Damages. <laughs> Happy 19th wedding anniversary to him and his beautiful wife, Miss Edna. Happy anniversary, guys. I'm sorry, Dr. Damages, but we consider you a quack doctor. Oh, by the way, he made a video when we got to 500,000 subscribers, congratulating us at the same time, Sally saying that you guys have not subscribed to his channel. We want to congratulate our friend, uh, Adiola Fayum, uh, of Keeping It Real. She hit 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. 500,000 subscribers. We want to say congrats to her and um, all of you who are watching me. I want to thank you for subscribing. Those who have not subscribed, I thank you. <laughs> I just want to remind you that our friends are going places. They're winning awards, but we're here. We'll be here. Please, people, subscribe to this channel. We are begging you. <laughs> Please subscribe to Dr. Damage's channel on YouTube. He makes great content on this show. We are trying to follow his footsteps. We are not there yet. We are learning from him. Also, a huge birthday shout out to my mother in Texas. That is Dr. Lovett Oragiato. Mommy, happy birthday to you. I cannot believe you are having the talkie without me. Like, and me, I, I thought I was your girl. You're supposed to build me the jollof rice and the talkie that you guys are having. And I heard that you are going to Dubai for your birthday. If you go to Dubai without me, mommy, I'm not coming back to Texas. You 
you better put me in your suitcase because I want to go to Dubai with you. Anyway, we're so grateful for these people, they're viewers of the show, and we like to celebrate our viewers. Congratulations, guys. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, press the subscribe button. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out. <laughs>